Hey, I'm National ERISA Disability Attorney Nancy Cavey. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, uh, the Florida Bar tells me that I have to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast is not legal advice. Now that I've said that, nothing is going to prevent me from giving you easy to understand information about the ERISA disability claims process, the games that disability carriers play, and what we need to do to get you the disability benefits you deserve. Now, before we get started, I want to tell you exactly what it is I'm going to be talking about. Ready? Now, I have been talking about the wonderful world of Unum. Uh, and Unum is much like many disability carriers. They continue to make decisions that are beneficial to them rather than to policyholders who depend on them to do the right thing when the time comes. And that's why I'm going to be revisiting Unum. Now, you may say, well, listen, why should I listen? Because my carrier is not Unum. Well, Unum's game plan is the same. And disability carriers' game plans are the same. So I'm going to talk about how Unum rejects uh, complaints of spine pain and cognitive issues and problems with side effects of medication. I'm going to talk about vertebral compression fractures and wedging claims uh, that, that was overturned by a federal judge. And I'm going to talk about Unum's claim that a policyholder's back pain was out of proportion to the evidence of radiculopathy on exam. Now, that's important because, as I've said, these are games that Unum plays, but this is the 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 denial toolbox that's used by every type of disability carrier. So just because we're talking about Unum doesn't mean that it doesn't relate to you and your disability claim. There are lessons to be learned from Unum's conduct that are applicable to your case. All right, time for a break. Have you been robbed of your peace of mind from your disability insurance carrier? You owe it to yourself to get a copy of Robbed of Your Peace of Mind, which provides you with everything you need to know about the long-term disability claim process. Request your free copy of the book at kvlaw.com today. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. I'm going to talk about how Unum Life rejected the complaints of spinal pain despite objective findings and ignores complaints of cognitive issues caused by fatigue and side effects of medication. Now, regardless of your occupation, you have the burden to prove that you're disabled based on the terms of your disability policy or plan. Disability carriers like Unum are always looking for a reason to deny disability benefits. So I'm going to talk about the case of Carney versus Unum Life. It's a case out of the Eastern District of Michigan. The disability plan uh, required that Carney prove that he was limited from performing the material and substantial duties of his regular occupation due to sickness or injury. Well, that sounds pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Dr. Carney suffered from cervical radiculopathy, headaches, and pain together with impaired concentration and fatigue. He was an internist. He performed physical examinations, took medical histories, performed and interpreted diagnostic tests, and recommended, of course, a treatment plan. His occupation as an internist required constant standing, bending, writing or typing, conducting uh, an examination, lifting and moving patients. Now, he had to be attentive not only to uh, the physical and cognitive issues of a patient, but he also had to document that in his medical records and his treatment plans. And of course, he was on call. He had to respond to calls at all hours of the day. Now, his spinal pain made it impossible for him to practice medicine, and he applied for his benefits. He told Unum that he was unable to take the pain medication that was prescribed during the workday because the medication could affect his memory and concentration and interfere with his ability to exercise sound medical judgment. His pain caused sleeplessness, which in turn caused daytime fatigue and cognitive difficulties that impaired his ability to practice medicine. So in view of all of that, what did Unum do? Unum did what most disability carriers do. They denied his application based on multiple reviews of their liar for hire uh, physicians. And ultimately they issued a final denial saying that the exam findings were minimal and inconsistent with the level of pain he complained, that his treatment and his medication dosing was stable. And uh, despite the support of his physicians, they didn't think that the restrictions and limitations were applicable. Now, these are common reasons that Unum and other disability carriers will use to justify a claim denial or termination. So what did the court do? Now, the first thing the court did was to look at 
the nature of his job duties. What was his ability to carry out the physical requirements of his work and the cognitive responsibilities that he has as a physician? Now, there were a number of physical restrictions and limitations that would have made the practice of medicine more difficult from a physical standpoint. Obviously, lifting your arms uh, uh, up, performing prolonged sitting, prolonged standing, uh, all of those motions, bending, twisting. Um, And the court noted that, look, you have to not only be physically fit to do those, but you have to be free of cognitive impairments. And so you've got to be able to concentrate. You can't be excessively fatigued. You can't have the side effects of medication because all of those would render a physician unable to practice medicine and not safely care for the patients. How about the self-reported limitations? Well, the court accepted Carney's report of his level of pain, and they said that his level of pain was well-documented and consistent in his medical records. His pain and his lack of pain relief, despite various methods of controlling his pain, had been objectively documented in his medical records. And all of his physicians agreed that he had side effects of medication that impacted his ability to function. So MRI tests, nerve conduction study tests, ejections, physical exams, it all added up and supported his complaints of pain. So the court said, we're going to reject Unum's opinions because they have not physically observed him and assessed him. They haven't conducted a physical exam. They've ignored all of the pain treatments that he's undergone, including epidurals, a rhizotomy, injections, and the fact that he's seen a lot of doctors. He's had physical therapy. He's taken all this medication. And the court said, look, when a person has undergone difficult treatment for their claimed pain, as Dr. Carney had, it's highly improbable that they did so just to strengthen the credibility of their complaints and increase their chance of getting disability benefits. So the judge overturned Unum's denial and said that the medical evidence supported the conclusion that he couldn't do the material and substantial duties of his occupation. But they weren't done. They looked at the cognitive responsibilities. And they said, look, Unum has failed to consider the claim of cognitive limitations, even though his treating doctors have identified cognitive impairment as a critical part of his claim. That failure cast doubt on the thoroughness of Unum's review. And of course, Unum's liar for higher peer review opinion that the opiate pain medications wouldn't interfere with Dr. Carney's medical practice was rejected by the court. Unum's doctor had opined that the appropriate use Um, just confining it to evening hours wasn't justified and that he should be using it the entire time he was on uh, uh, duty, including on call. Um, The court said, look, he's got a legitimate reason for concern about the opiate use during his regular hours. And the court, you know, rejected this out of hand peer review report uh, that he could take the medication uh, during working hours. And the court rejected uh, Unum's uh, contention that the uh, MRI findings were not consistent with the level of pain that uh, Carney was complaining. And as a result, they awarded Dr. Carney his benefits. So you can see that the analysis of his duties were crucial and the medical records supported not only the diagnosis, but the level of pain and problems that he was having and its impact both physically and cognitively. And of course, his physicians supported the claim and wrote very strong supporting letters tying this together, documenting it in the medical records, which was consistent with Carney's complaints. And of course, which was consistent uh, with the entire story that was being told by Dr. Carney. So you can see that working with your physician, having strong medical records, uh, having um, consistent report of pain and difficulty is the key to getting your benefits. So congratulations to Dr. Carney, whose benefits were awarded. Let's take a break.